Hey guys, it's Matt here. Um, actually, finally done with the first version of Speed Radar. So it's been over a year in the making and finally done. It's about three o'clock in the morning for me, which is way past my bedtime. And I'm gonna just try and make this quick and try not to drag on with stuff. So we're gonna go over the user interface and we're gonna go over the different modes that you guys can use and how locking works and basically just how the system works. Uh, you can find a download link in the description in case you didn't already guess, but uh, basically this is going to work almost identically to the custom signal Golden Eagle 2. Some of you guys may have used that, and if you have, you can pretty much just jump right in, just look at the key bindings, and you guys should just be able to jump right in and get this to work. I'm not going to tell you how to install it. That's all in the description. So read down there if you can't install it. Okay, user interface. So you've got three different windows with speeds in them. You've got the target speed on the left, the lock speed in the middle, and your patrol speed on the right. Patrol speed is the speed of your car. You know, if we start rolling forwards, you know, you get a little indicator, tells you how fast you're going. The lock speed is whatever you're locking. So if we lock that speed right there, it stays in the window. The target speed is on the left. That is the active target so that is whatever is right in front of your radar right now okay when you lock that changes still so don't like lock it and then freak out because it's gone that's fine because your lock is there on the right the reason that that happens is so say for example you lock this guy doing 63 and you pull out behind him but now he's doing 75 you may want to be aware of that so that you can you know write him a bigger ticket that's the reason you can continue to track people's speeds. It's very useful for you. In between the target speed and the lock speed is the main mode indicator. So there's six different modes. Two of them you can only access when you're stopped. Four of them you can only access when you're moving. Okay, these are the two you can access when you're stopped. Okay, basically the little green triangle is your car, the red triangles are civilian cars. That's the easiest way to look at that. Right now, you're going to capture any vehicle that's in front of you that's going away, and any vehicle that's in front of you that's coming towards you. Similarly, if you select the rear antenna, you're going to get any vehicles coming towards you that are behind you, and any vehicles going away from you that are behind you. You can kind of look at this as being a road with you and four other cars. That's the easiest way to look at it. Underneath the lock, you've got your range. Now, that is basically the distance between you and whatever car uh, is either the active target or when you lock it, it's the range at which you lock. That's really useful because, say for example, you intend to lock this guy, who's kind of far out, but instead when you hit lock, you locked a guy, you locked, say for example, this guy, who's really close you can tell that because you know how far away the guy was that you're trying to get and you can look at your little range thing and if those two things don't add up you know that you've locked the wrong car there's no indicator that tells you that like hey I locked this car there's nothing that does that because in real life there's not a little arrow that pops up on top of someone's car that's going to tell you that you got their, their speed that'd be nice but it's not how it works um, the next thing in between the lock speed and the patrol speed is the fastest indicator, okay? Basically, in normal operation, which we are right now, you're gonna get the closest vehicle to you. In real life, you're gonna get the strongest signal to the radar, which is either you know the biggest vehicle or the closest vehicle. It's usually gonna be the closest, um, but occasionally you're gonna have a little trade-off with the largest vehicle. So say you got a semi and like a Corvette or something, it's going to get the semi, more than likely. Uh, so, in that same scenario, if the semi is doing 45 and the Corvette's doing 85, and you're trying to lock the speed of the Corvette, in older radar systems, you're not able to do that. But with this, and with uh, the Golden Eagle 2, you can just select the fastest mode, and you're going to get only the speed of the Corvette. So it's only going to return 85. So that's probably the easiest way to explain that, you know, or a motorcycle going next to a semi-truck. That's an easy way to explain that as well, okay? What happens when you lock a speed is all of these things get locked. 
the mode gets locked. Obviously, the speed gets locked into the lock window, the range gets locked, the fastness indicator is locked, and your patrol speed is locked. That's useful for you so that you know that the speed you locked is the vehicle that you were trying to get. If something doesn't add up, you probably didn't get the vehicle that you're trying to get, you, un you accidentally got someone else's speed. It happens all the time. So it's just a really good way of seeing that, you know, oh, I didn't get that guy. Um, another w reason that in real life you lock the patrol speed is because sometimes there's issues with the radar, and what will happen is that the radar will return zero as the patrol speed, even though you're doing 40, and that's going to offset your target speed by 40. Um, either positive 40 or negative 40. So you may lock someone doing 100 when they're actually doing 60, which isn't your intent. Um, that's not mirrored in here, but that is how it is in real life. Anyway, I said I wasn't going to drag on about stuff that's not important. So let's go over all the moving modes. Okay, you cycle through these using K. Again, self-explanatory. Right now we've got vehicles going away from us in front of us. So that's like this white car. Um, sometimes it's a little finicky about getting getting vehicles, but uh, it's just something that we're working on. Maybe we'll fix it for version 2, but for the most part it's pretty reliable. Um, so this is useful here. If you're, say, like right here, you want to get the cars coming towards you, you can select that mode and it'll get the vehicles coming towards you. Similarly, if you've got a car coming up behind you real quick, select that mode. It's self-explanatory. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, it is finally done. Everything seems to work, and uh, you know, I mean, seems to be decent. So uh, yeah, you can find a download link in the description. Um, have fun.